Hi there, I'm Katie and in this video I'm going to show you how to cut your knitting. I'm using my own design, the Fairy Ring Cardigan, as an example. To get started, you'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends, some strong sock yarn, the colour doesn't matter too much as you won't see it when this process is done. You'll also need a crochet hook, I'm using a 3.5mm hook, and a nice sharp pair of scissors for cutting that steak. Once you've got everything ready, let's get started. So first, let's visualise what we're going to do. Looking at the front of your cardigan, the steak is a bridge of five waist stitches. You can see them clearly as they're marked by a change in the colour work. We're eventually going to cut right up the middle of that central stitch, but first we need to work a crochet reinforcement, beginning at the hem and working all the way up one side of the cardigan, then working down from the neck edge on the other side. So first, let's weave in all of our ends to the wrong side of the cardigan, working away from the steak. This means that none of those ends are crossing that central line where we're going to cut and they won't unravel once the cardigan's cut open. Now let's look more closely at those five steak stitches. Again, the middle of that central stitch is where we're eventually going to cut. Now imagine that those stitches are numbered from right to left. One, two, three, four, five. The crochet reinforcement is going to be worked either side of stitch three. So firstly, between stitches two and three, working up from the bottom of the cardigan, and then between stitches three and four, working down from the top. To begin, make a slip knot with your sock yarn and put it on your crochet hook. Then insert the hook into the cast off edge between stitches 2 and 3. Wrap the yarn over the hook and pull up a loop to the right side of your work and then through the slip knot. This secures your yarn to your knitting ready to start the reinforcement. Now working into that very first row of steak stitches, we insert the crochet hook under the second leg of stitch 2 and the first leg of stitch three. At this point you should have three loops on your crochet hook, two of them from your knitting and one of your sock yarn. Now wrap the yarn over your crochet hook and pull that loop through the two loops from your knitting only, leaving two loops of sock yarn on your crochet hook. Now wrap the yarn over the hook again and this time pull it all the way through so you're left with just one loop of sock yarn on your crochet hook. That's one crochet stitch completed. Now we do the same again in the row above. Insert the crochet hook under the second leg of stitch two and the first leg of stitch three. Now you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over hook and pull the loop through the two loops from your knitting only. Yarn over hook and this time pull it all the way through. Now repeat this process row by row, one at a time, up the front of the cardigan until you reach the neck edge. Now you've finished one whole column of crochet reinforcement, you're going to flip the cardigan upside down and do the same thing, working in the other direction. So same again, you're going to make a slip knot with your sock yarn, pop it on your crochet hook, and then push the hook through the cast on edge, pull up a loop and pull that through your work and through the slip knot to secure your sock yarn ready to begin your second column of crochet. Now this time it's a little bit easier to see where you're working because that first column of crochet that you worked is already pulling those stitches a little bit to the left and making things a little bit easier for you to see. So you're going to begin by inserting your hook in the first row under the first leg of stitch four and the second leg of stitch three. 
this gives you three loops on your hook. Same again, you put the yarn over the hook and pull it through those two loops from your knitted work, but leaving the sock yarn loop on your hook. Then yarn over the hook again and pull it through all the loops so you only have one loop remaining on the crochet hook. Continue like this, row by row, working down the front of the cardigan, and you'll soon see that those two columns of crochet start to make the central stitch pull apart, revealing a ladder in between, which is going to make it nice and clear exactly where you're going to cut. When you reach the hem, Break your sock yarn, leaving a little bit of a tail, and then thread that tail through the final loop from your crochet hook to secure the end. Now you're ready to cut, and those two lines of crochet are showing you really clearly where you need to cut. You just need to be careful not to cut any of the sock yarn reinforcement and make sure you only cut through one layer of your cardigan. You don't want to cut the back of your cardigan open by accident. Just cut the front really carefully, cutting every strand of yarn between those two columns of crochet. And that's it, you've now transformed a seamless circular piece of knitting into a cardigan with an opening. There's a little bit of finishing to do. I'm now going to show you where to pick up the stitches for the button band, which again is done using the colour coded stitches of the steek and a way to finish the steek on the wrong side of your work to make it really nice and neat and professional looking. So when you pick up stitches for the button band, you're going to pick up in between the final steek stitch and the first stitch of the body of the cardigan. So that means you're picking up stitches two and a half stitches away from that cut steek edge. So that prevents any unraveling from happening. It also leaves you with a little bit of extra fabric on the inside of your cardigan. Once your button band is knitted, that's going to be hidden. And there's a couple of different ways that you might decide to finish off that folded edge. One option is just to leave it. Those crochet stitches are holding everything in place. There's no danger of it fraying. So if you are happy with how it looks and you don't want to do any more work, you could just leave it as it is. However, if you're up for doing a bit of finishing, you could sew it gently down, either folded towards the button band or over towards the body of the cardigan and gently tack it down with just with some of the main colour from your knitting to hold it in place. However, by far my favourite way of finishing a steek and the one I'm going to show you is to cover that edge with a decorative ribbon. It's so much my favourite way that I actually designed this woodland ribbon especially to go on this cardigan. Um, so there's a couple of ways you could do it. You could um, fold the steek edge over towards the body of the cardigan and stitch it down, or you could cover it up, fold it towards the button band and cover it up there. The only thing to bear in mind if you decide to do it that way, obviously, on the button band that has the buttonholes in, you might end up covering those buttonholes and you'll be able to see what I've done on my version is use my sewing machine just to prepare some machine sewn buttonholes in that other button band so that the buttons can still go through. So firstly, I will fold over the cut edge of the ribbon so that's tucked underneath and carefully pin it to the top of the button band. I'll pin both ends first and then the middle and then gently pin in between until I've got the whole ribbon carefully put in place along the button band ready to stitch. 
and I'm going to stitch using just a really simple whip stitch along the edge of the ribbon, picking up a few fibres from the knitted button band. I'm taking care not to go all the way through to the right side of my knitted work, just because I'm using a um, pale coloured sewing thread to match the ribbon. I don't want that to show through on the right side of the button band. So I'm being a little bit careful about that um, while I stitch this up one side across the top of the ribbon and then down the other side and the bottom to secure it over that cut edge. And that's it. You can now add some buttons if you haven't added buttons already and your cardigan will be completely finished and ready for you to wear. I really hope that you've found this tutorial helpful, especially if you're somebody who's never cut your knitting before. I really hope that this might have given you confidence to try the technique. If you're looking for my fairy ring pattern or the ribbon that I used in this tutorial, you can find the links in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next Green Bean podcast. Take care. Bye.